So, uh, but before I get started with this, I'd like to uh, just make uh, uh, for anybody who's not too much involved with the EG application and interpretation, I will have to point out some main concepts of EG analysis. EG can be represented under two domains. One domain is the time domain. In the time domain, you uh, evaluate through time what is changing, and in with this kind of uh, evaluation, which is the classical interpretation for uh, um, epilepsy, you evaluate transients in time. And in transients, you can evaluate cyclic, cyclic alternating patterns of sleep, the introduction into sleep, or uh, a triphasic pa transients like this one, which, are, which have been considered typical of many diseases and as I will show, are not so typical. The other way is to compress. It's the classical Fourier then Gabor transform, and then you compress this activity into uh, bands of frequency, and th this is the frequency domain. The, in the frequency domain, you analyze which, which are the specific frequency bands, delta, theta, alpha, uh, beta, gamma activity, and then you can observe the distribution on the scalp uh, at the, of, the different, uh, um, of the different bands, and this is a distribution of delta, theta, and alpha. With this kind of representation, which is a static representation, you miss, you can quantify the activities, but you miss lots of information. Then the other method is to try to uh, display the changes in, of frequencies into time, and this is a cinematic representation of EG. And here you see that uh, uh, in this case you have a representation not of amplitudes, but of frequencies, and you can observe uh, how in Alzheimer's disease there is this stability of uh, an activity around 10 hertz, 10, 9 hertz, while in Lewy body disorder, there is a fluctuation of several frequencies which are inscribing in different areas of the scalp. Uh, the other method to uh, evaluate, uh, um, since as I was showing, it is quite difficult to interpret these cinematic um, uh, uh, maps of EG frequencies, and then another method, which was developed mostly to study patients, to study the sleep organization of patients in coma, or uh, the evolution of uh, um, EG frequencies in developing brains. And uh, here you can see um, selecting epochs, which means an epoch is which part of the, the duration of a part of EG that you are recording. And in this way, you can see through times, every six, eight seconds, two seconds, how the dominant frequency changes. Um, sorry, I've been so uh, boring about the basics, but actually the point is that you really need to have information on EG on uh, um, what is going on through time, if you want to understand uh, the presentation that you observe in uh, this kind of disorder. Unfortunately, uh, and I'll go back to the uh, previous one, uh, most laboratories get very uh, involved in one kind of elaboration. They fall in love with their uh, a specific technique. They apply only that, and so at the end, information are qu is quite difficult to gather and to compare in different, um, uh, in, uh, among different laboratories. So I will, uh, uh, I will make again an example. This is an old handbook, uh, German handbook of, uh, on dementia. And it is an, uh, an early application, I'm thinking of the um, early 90s. And uh, these were the several of the papers which at the time were mostly focused on Alzheimer's disease. And they were saying there are abnormalities in Alzheimer's disease. And here you see a, a time domain uh, representation and the frequency domain for each derivation. Derivation is the part of the scalp from which you record EG. 
And here you have a dominant alpha frequency. Then the dementia becomes more severe. Uh, there is some slow activity appearing, and you see that alpha is decreased, and there is a distribution around the uh, theta and delta activity. And again, notice there is something even worse. In these patients, you have the classical triphasic frontal complex, probably if someone of you is still a neurologist and reads EG, you must, you must remember that these are the archetypical uh, uh, um, findings of uh, prion disease. And so, uh, but if you only, if you don't look at the um, uh, representation through time, uh, you will miss the information from a static representation of frequencies. Uh, now, what happened in dementia with ubiquitous? There was this paper, the consensus of 2005, which was uh, already presented twice this morning, and among the supportive features, you have EG. And what do you have in EG? You have prominent slow activity on temporal derivations, and you have uh, um, the uh, uh, sharp transients on uh, sharp temporal transients. This was shown in different papers. This was the paper by uh, Ian McKeith where they were showing theta and delta mostly in, uh, and delta activity mostly in new uh, body dementia, but also in Alzheimer and temporal transients. And this was the kind of uh, transient that we observed. I'm sorry, I can't go too deep in the, in the topic, but this is a, a frontal intermittent rhythmic delta activity, which is a, a rhythmic delta, which appears periodically on the G, and this other one is a representation of triphasic waves, which is mistaking Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease uh, uh, in uh, a dementia with Lewy bodies. So, uh, well, actually, we... Well, mostly uh, uh, we had spent some very much time on the, uh, working on this. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, 2000, we saw this paper by um, the Newcastle group. And uh, uh, here they presented a very nice idea. They used the, it is the cinematic presentation that I was discussing about, showing how. Uh, the plot of the map is in frequencies. It goes from 5 Hz to, uh, to 15 Hz. And you see that in Alzheimer, in normal patients, there is this uh, constant distribution around the, uh, an alpha frequency in uh, posterior derivation, while in DLB there is this variability. Uh, there is one thing that you have to notice in this paper. There was really... A, uh, a bias uh, in the way the frequencies were observed because they only measured frequencies from 5 to 18 hertz. Uh, but then it was a very good idea and we, were, we started this, trying to understand how to improve this kind of representation. And so we came out with many papers uh, on the period when... Uh, uh, there was mostly this cholinergic theory of the mechanism of uh, EG organization in Lewy body dementia and in Alzheimer. So at the time we um, started studying what happened when you had cholinergic modulation in patients with fluctuating cognition. It meant it is a, a, po it is a probable Lewy body disease, but we just wanted to focus to the fluctuating cognition. And we used different... Uh, method, also magnetoencephalography. Magnetoencephalography is a quite complicated system uh, which can record from three, four centimeters below the skull. Uh, and so actually what we saw, first thing is that in dementia with Lewy bodies, you had a prominent distribution of dominant frequencies in a band which is around uh, 5.5 to, 5, 5 .5 to 7.5 Hz, which, is, uh, which can be called fast theta or slow alpha, uh, and uh, 
uh, is, uh, um, was the most specific finding together with the fluctuation. And at the, well, at the time, it was 2003 when we first published the method, you we could observe that by compressing the G in epochs, we could observe a variation, a, a periodical or a pseudo-periodical oscillation of the G dominant frequencies. And so actually, uh, with the following years, we decided to uh, validate the different methods. Uh, we finally, finally published this paper in 2008 with the, the representation here of the G is uh, the spectra of frequencies through times, how it changes every two, four seconds. And what we, could we, what we could demonstrate was that in uh, Alzheimer dementia, uh, on posterior derivations, uh, which means parietal and occipital derivations, the dominant frequency is quite stable. Uh, um, rarely other frequencies do inscribe, while uh, in dementia with Lewy bodies, and as I will show later as a uh, um, paper by Laura Bonanni, who is the first author of, the, of this study. Um, uh, this is evident in MCI, which will develop, will develop dementia with Lewy bodies. And here instead, in dementia with Lewy bodies, as I was saying, you see these oscillations of dominant frequencies. Then you have pre-alpha, then you have alpha, then you have pre-alpha, then you have alpha. And this is, we could categorize the different patterns of abnormalities. So we started to categorize pattern one, which is stable alpha, pattern two, oscillating dominant frequency in the range of pre-alpha and alpha, pattern three, uh, uh, um, constant pre-alpha on all uh, presence, pattern four, when you have this uh, uh, starting oscillation between delta and pre-alpha and the dominant delta. The last two are really a specific. This, for us, it was really a problem to try to categorize uh, frontotemporal dementia uh, because the patients, once you re uh, record the gene in patients with frontotemporal dementia, you mostly face these two kind of patterns, not the others. So, uh, well, I hope I'll, uh, uh, yes. Um, this is the method that you can read, and so we we had a comparison. We compared our uh, study with all the different possible methods, being uh, um, having been for many years a, a basic science neurophysiologist and then a clinical neurophysiologist, and I had. Uh, uh, I could uh, um, gain uh, competence on all the different methods, and so actually we started uh, comparing, comparing the cinematic representation, like the one which was used first time by uh, Walker and McKeith. Then we compared uh, with, uh, um, uh, this is called compressed spectral array, the met this method of representation, uh, where we developed the different patterns. And we studied uh, the, um, the, uh, um, the resolution of uh, the, dif this is a, a comparison of the B standard DG evaluation. And this is uh, 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 the um, presence of different frequencies, the appearance of uh, uh, sharp transients. And so what we could, demonstrate uh, by analyzing the uh, um, um, static, uh, dynamic, compressed spectral array uh, from different derivations. I will not go into detail because actually I understand it's quite difficult to read this, uh, read this table, but they are already published in brains and in different, <laughs> many other papers you can, uh, you can um, pick up the data from there. Uh, and uh, we used several comparative methods like uh, um, uh, comparing the different method, comparing kernel-based analysis, uh, studying the best cutoffs uh, with um, the kind of patterns that we described, like you see in, in Alzheimer's there is this 
pattern one and most constantly while in, GD, in a dementia with Lewy body, it, there is a, a um, distribution of the different patterns and the patterns then through times with the, a, a two-year follow-up, we could de demonstrate that there is a progression of the pattern uh, of abnormality. This is the K-kernel uh, cluster analysis to see what is the best method we used uh, um, we made also um, a, a gaming uh, test with uh, different operators and interpreters of VG to see whether there was inter-rated reliability for the method. And uh, at the end, the, uh, the best method was really to uh, represent compressed spectral arrays and in, uh, evaluate the, this pre-alpha frequency. Uh, these are examples that you can download from, from the Berain paper because are, these are all examples of the um, different uh, um, findings and which were presented for teaching purposes. Um, so you see that uh, in Alzheimer you can have um, sharp transients like you have sharp transients in dementia with Lewy bodies, uh, but it is quite rare. Uh, the, again, you have another representation of sharp transients in dementia with Lewy bodies, but the best method is to evaluate the patterns, and in Alzheimer you have a dominant alpha frequency on posterior derivations, which are the posterior derivation. When you have delta or theta, it inscribes in parallel, but alpha persists, uh, is still present, uh, while in uh, DLB, um, and uh, these were the testing methods, you have this uh, cyclic pattern oscillating from pre-alpha to alpha or becoming stable in the pre-alpha. This is a six hertz frequencies, uh, while here it is in oscillations from nine to six hertz. And so, well, we have many, many examples of the, uh, of the method, and uh, um, I, will, I will, will not go through it, but you can, uh, um, if you want to learn how to use it, you can download from the brain paper. And uh, once we uh, compared the different variables, which are the dominant frequency, the dominant frequency variability, the prevalence, the inscription of other frequencies on different derivation, we could select a group of derivation, which is the parietal and occipital derivation, and uh, um, uh, observe the inscription of the uh, pre-alpha frequency and this could separate uh, quite cogently Alzheimer from Lewy body dementia. And as I said, this is uh, what appears also in, uh, um, in uh, mild cognitive impairment when patients have still a dubious diagnosis and we still, but we uh, if we observe this pre-alpha inscription on parietal and occipital derivation, uh, mm, this predicts quite clearly that they are going to become uh, Lewy body dementias. So we are at the last um, consensus. We had seen the, the first consensus, and the last consensus, what does it say? Uh, the last consensus changed the way you have to evaluate EG, and it says that you have to observe uh, free, the, a pre-alpha dominant frequency stable or intermixed with alpha theta in pseudoperiodic patterns. And this is the, uh, the how can I say, in, in our uh, history uh, of development of the method. Well, actually, from the paper in Brain, Laura, uh, who's my soon-to-be associate professor and also been my collaborators, collaborator for many year, years, and this, we have all um, these kind of networks of uh, uh, different laboratories, and uh, from Newcastle to different uh, other uh, um, uh, universities of Italy. And so we have uh, this... Uh, um, 
list of paper describing uh, how uh, it, it is important to apply it in uh, mild cognitive impairment because it can help to distinguish uh, which will be uh, which will become a dementia with Lewy body from others and uh, uh, the um, uh, and uh, uh, the the different hypotheses on uh, where it is coming from. And on the different hypotheses on where it is coming from, uh, I will discuss a little bit just uh, um, uh, before the end of my talk, uh, just recalling the concept of uh, REM sleep behavior assessment. Uh, REM sleep behavior assessment is, uh, it would be nice if patients with Lewy body dementia had uh, a clear-cut REM sleep behavior disorder, but in order to describe a REM sleep in classic polysomnography, you must have uh, desynchronization of EG activity. You cannot have pre-alpha or delta or theta during the REM sleep behavior disorder. If there is delta or theta during the REM sleep, it is not REM sleep behavior disorder. It is called oneric uh, agitation or agripnea excitata. Uh, this was described already by uh, Arnulf uh, uh, in uh, the Agid group uh, that she was surprised. She was saying, well, actually, they do behave like the, the, the movie that uh, uh, Professor Walker has showed. They do behave like in a REM sleep behavior disorder, but they have slow EG activity. And what is that appears in these diseases? And so this representation, I'm sorry, is even more complicated than usual. It is a study on REM sleep behavior disorder in Parkinson's disease. This is time from REM onset, and this is, these are frequencies. And you see, what, which are the frequencies which appear during REM sleep behavior disorder of Parkinson? There is no classic desynchronization like in the normal REM sleep. There is pre-alpha activity which goes during the REM sleep um, disorder of these patients. Uh, so we started to think that probably the, the core uh, of the mechanism of uh, induction of this uh, EEG fluctuation is a thalamic dysfunction, and we focused our attention to the uh, medial pulvinar part of the thalamus, which generates frequencies in the pre-alpha range, and uh, these frequencies are um, working during activation and synchronization of cortex and thalamus. Uh, this was a paper by Bagnin and Pnas, but then we started studying thalamus, and there are several papers by Laura showing the uh, different thalam thalamic parcellization and uh, the uh, regulator activity. We are thinking that mostly and people working with us in collaboration. We are mostly focusing on the idea that the mechanism of this fluctuating cognition, appearance of uh, um, uh, hallucinations during wake time, uh, is uh, a di st status dissociatus, which is a, a dissociated state, and it is the dysfunction between the regulatory rhythm of the thalamus for sleep and waking state and occurrence of different dissociation, uh, uh, which can lead to occurrence of, uh, yeah, <laughs> to occurrence of different disorders, which are hallucinations, parasomnia. The REM sleep behavior disorder is a dissociation between the um, atonia that we should have during sleep because of the glycinergic projection and uh, uh, the occurrence of slower rhythm like in the pre-alpha range and uh, appearance of this disorder and occurrence of delirium and fluctuation. I must say, uh, since I, no, I have just a few seconds to, to stop, um, so uh, this is the main message. I yet uh, also... Uh, mm, I think I will uh, conclude with a question to the 
uh, to the audience, just in order to show how it is. Uh, if you really don't know clearly what you are doing, you can uh, really get involved in terrible mistakes. So I will make a guess, ask this question. What is this CG to you? Is anyone involved in uh, EG recording? What does it look like? These are classic triphasics. I see Professor uh, Manganotti is a comment. Seems a Jacobs Kreuzberg. Yes, a classic pattern. This is, was when we were young and the first uh, um, discovery of the triphasics complex in Kreuzberg ja Jacob, you could make diagnosis of this type. And, well, actually, the point is that you have it also in post anoxic, uh, uh, in post -anoxic coma, you have the occurrence of these triphasics. Um, pe well, people get very excited. Among the different examples I presented in brain, there was uh, an, an error in evaluation because of the polarity of the triphasics. So actually, the, a, a trace was interpreted as a triphasic complex, and so the a diagnosis and the prognosis was given to the patients. You have prion disease, that's the end. So actually, no more than six months of life. Uh, and instead, uh, what, what is it? Let me show. This patient had uh, bladder disease, and the bladder was infected by Providencia retgeri, which is a uh, urea-splitting bacteria, and she was producing ammonia. Uh, uh, the level of ammonia, which was inducing the triphasic waves, was... Uh, 300 on a range, or a maximum range on 70. Once we started antibiotics, the EG normalized. So uh, pay attention and consider different options. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs>